Hello everyone, welcome to class 2 on portfolio theory. In our last class, we said we we're going to continue from portfolio returns. In portfolio management, you need to understand that it is important to evaluate portfolio returns and your portfolio risk. So we're starting from portfolio returns. Now to calculate your portfolio returns, you need to understand if you have one asset portfolio or two asset portfolio. So a one asset portfolio just implies that that investor has just one asset in his portfolio. One security, say you bought shares in Dangote Cement. Two asset portfolio means you could have multiple assets in your portfolio, right? So maybe you bought shares in Dangote Sugar, you bought shares in Dangote Salt, you bought shares in Milo, you bought shares in UBA Bank, and you have many assets in your portfolio. So to calculate your portfolio return on that one asset portfolio, you have three approaches. You can use the simple average. You can use expected return and you can use your holding period method. So your simple average is telling you that your portfolio return, which is denoted as X bar, is a summation of the historical returns over N. Very simple. Basically, you're trying to find the mathematical mean. Remember mean, median, mode that we did back in secondary school or university. This approach focuses on historical information. So they can give you in a question the historical returns say in 2015 in 2016 in 2017 they made 15 percent returns 20 percent in 2016 they made 19 percent here then you want to evaluate the portfolio return for 2018 so you just do portfolio return that is x bar the mean is equal to summation this means sum is this is a brick symbol meaning sum of all this, this is 15 percent plus 20 percent plus 19 percent divided by three because they are just three, right? So that will give you the average. Now, how do you know which method to use? It depends on the information given. Now, to the next approach, which is called the expected return. This one uses probability. Hmm? This one is based on the future. Now, this is history. This is past. But this has to do with the future. So you're trying to get your portfolio return for 2018 by predicting the future. That, oh, it's possible that we might make 15%. We might actually make 17%. We might actually make 18%. We might make 19%. However, there's a 20% chance that we'll make this 15%. There's a 10% chance that we'll make a 17%. There's a 30% chance that we'll make 18%. And say there's a 40% chance that we'll actually make 19%. All these probabilities must add up to 100%, right? So the formula for calculating your portfolio return under this approach is X bar. This X bar represents your portfolio return summation of the probable return does it make sense so we'll solve a question of course we'll solve exam questions to demonstrate all this so this is the formula here this is the formula of this one here you can write it out then the holding period approach uses the previous price of the share and the dividend so the portfolio return here is saying that what is your stock price or the share price before minus the share price now plus the dividend divided by the share price before so basically it's finding the percentage change what's the percentage change that's what it does we we'll solve questions to demonstrate each approach so let's go to two asset portfolio here you get your portfolio return return on portfolio by saying what is the return on the first asset denote the first asset as a times the weight on the first asset plus the return on the second asset times the weight on the second asset plus return on the third asset up until whether you have 100 and you can just denote whatever it is with n the last one right with n so r stands for return w stands for weight does that make sense without spending too much time here let us solve questions so that it will help us to understand what we are doing um so let's read this question that you have on the screen it says in each of the following situation compute the expected return so they gave you three situations as you can see on the screen so situation a says the return of the last three years in the livestock sector of the nigerian stock market is provided below as you can see you have 2018 2019 and 2020 this is historical can you see that they gave you the returns so now they told you to calculate the expected return. Since you already know the formula, let the formula always guide you. You know that your expected return is equal to summation X over N. So you ask yourself, what is X? Be 12%. You have X2 to be 10%. 
and you have x3 to be eight percent okay so the expected return will be 12 percent plus 10 percent plus eight percent divided by three because you have three years so you put that in your calculator that's 10 percent so your expected return is 10 percent okay now in the second situation as you have on the screen they said the probability distribution of the return on an investment in Oreo Fair PLC's equity stock is as follows. They gave you the possible returns, 5%. Can you see that? They are telling you it is possible you make 5%, 8%, 10%, 12%, 15%. and 15%. They also attach the probability of those earnings to each of them. So you need to get the probable return. Remember the formula based on the information you're given. You know your formula in a one asset portfolio is equal to summation of the probable return right so you want to get the probable returns then you sum them you have five percent times 0 0.05 plus eight percent times 0 0.25 plus ten percent times 0 0.40 that's 40 percent plus 12 percent times 0 0.25 plus 15% times 0 0.05. Now, all these probabilities, they must actually add up to 100. Those probabilities you have on the screen. Whenever you're using probabilities, keep that in the back of your mind. You're not going to divide by N. Right? So, put all this in your calculator. And you're going to have 10%. Right? So, your expected return on that asset, based on the information they gave you, is 10%. So, the third situation, as you can see on the screen, is Cheta. PLC stock is currently selling for 23 Naira. It has the following prospect for next year. They gave you stock price. Can you see that? Prospect. So they're telling you that next year, the stock price could be 25 Naira. It could be 30 Naira. It could be 35 Naira. As you can see on the screen, they're telling you the dividend and they're not giving you the probability that those stock prices will be so. Because you cannot just tell me that stock price will be 25 Naira. What's the probability? They gave you a 25% probability for that conclusion and then they also give you 50% probability for the 30 naira and 25% for that so you've seen this information in the exam you already know that you're using the holding period approach which is the third one i explained behind right here what's the formula portfolio return is equal to the stock price in the future minus the stock price now plus the dividend divided by the stock price the old stock price you know this is actually how to get to change percentage change if this is the old stock price this is the difference between it it definitely grew from P0 to P1 plus the extra gain, which is dividend, over what was it before. So let's say you add 30% in your former paper and now you have 40%. They will now say, what's the percentage increase? It means the increase was 10%. 10% over 30% because the change over the old doesn't make sense. <laughs> so that's the concept. So Now they gave you three different prices in the future. They gave you 25 Naira, 30 Naira and 35 Naira. So you say, you pick the first one, 25 Naira minus... What is P0? They said Cheta PLC stock is currently selling for 23 Naira. So you put 23 Naira there. Plus, what's the dividend in the first year? That's the dividend that comes with this 25 Naira stock price. That's 1 Naira. Divided by what's the price now of the stock? 23. What of the remaining situations? So we can call this one X1, right? X2 and X3. So we're going to do for X1, X2 and X3. Then we'll now multiply by their probabilities, Okay. So what is P1? That is the future price of the share. This is the second possibility. 30 Naira minus 23 plus 1 divided by 23. The third possibility is that the stock price will be 35 Naira in the future. Minus, what is it now? 23 plus 1 divided by 23. 2 plus 1, that's 3 divided by 23. So 3 divided by 23. That will give you 0 0.1304. So just call that 13%. Right? So 30 minus 23 plus 1. No, this is not plus 1. The dividend in the second possibility is 1.5. And the dividend in the third possibility is 2.0. Okay, so be mindful of that. Um, so 30 minus 23. That's 7. 7 plus 1.5. That's 8.5. 8 8.5 divided by 23 will give us 36.9. So just call that 37%. You know I'm getting percentage. You just move the digits by two. You multiply by 100. Then 35 Naira minus 23 plus 2.0 divided by 23. That's 60.8. That's about 61%.
their probabilities attached to them right you already have the x now there are some probabilities attached to them which we have in the question as 0 0.25 that's 25 percent 0 0.50 and 0 0.25 these probabilities they must add up to one that's the way that you know if the question is even correct in the first place so now you get the probable returns 13 multiplied by 0 0.25 that's 3.25 37 multiplied by 0 0.5 that's 18.5 then 61 multiplied by 0 0.25 that's 15.25 you know this is pr times x right now that you have this you know that your portfolio return is summation pr just sum all this together and that's the answer so 15.25 plus 18.5 plus 3.25 that's that's 37 percent can you see when this one has a 50 percent chance of occurring it has to be somehow close to it this one has 25 percent chance 25 percent chance if i tell you that based on your preparation for it for your exam you have a you have a 90 percent chance of passing and then you have a 10 percent chance of failing it means that it's almost sure that you've passed right so the one that has the highest probability your answer would be kind of close to it if you look at this one also can you see we have 15 percent here but the probability is so low five percent probability which one has the highest probability here 40 percent see 40 percent and we're having that thing here can you see but that's not even important um so we're done with um single asset portfolio you know i explained single asset portfolio here now two asset portfolio what you most likely see in exam section usually in section b for sfm i can right so i've already told you how to get your portfolio return for two asset portfolio now let us solve question in that regard um we're going to read this question as you have on the screen 